They told me time and time again to watch myself, be cautious of my words, careful with my steps, because one step over the lines drawn could possibly be the end of me. So that's how I lived. Afraid of the toes I'd step upon if I ever once decided that maybe this time I would not compromise. I lived like this, teeth sinking deep into my tongue for fear of speaking words that could in turn hurt those hurting me. And what kind of life did I live with a voice able to soar, quietly slipping into almost nothing, the nothing I was destined for with these four lines drawn around me. So I wielded the end of the pencil with an eraser clean, untouched, and one day began without regard for law, smearing all those artificial borders, lines that I saw. I broke their connection at every sharp corner, kicking the dirt to rid of the lines and their imprints in my mind. And the light of the spineless, powerless being I buried beneath ash to surface a voice of the downtrodden class. Emerged from the trenches, my first words few, to break down the lines surrounding you. To now see you cross freely, unbound by any means, any sounds of the unheard cry. Spears spew from thy lips, which were once sealed with fear, tearing at the weak flesh of the lines comprised of our bones over years, piles and piles. No more barriers, we yell as we break, each line intersecting, paralleled in our wake. No more lines drawn in the time of our dawn. Our lives are our own. The final strike, the final blow, we keep the fight steady still, knowing the time of the line is ending soon. As we take the last breath, the first of many free, recollecting every line in our memory, we stop, we think. The existence of our lives on the lines we'd rather know than the lives we lived to be controlled by them. Uhuru. <laughs> Uhuru. First, I want to welcome all those in attendance, as well as all of you watching all over the world online. Burning Spirit Media presents Black August, celebrating African resistance from Haiti to Ferguson to Milwaukee. This event is intended to build support for WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM radio, both financially as well as gaining volunteers to help us build and operate Black Power 96 to its fullest capacity. Black Power 96 Radio is a project of the African People's Education and Defense Fund, whose mission is to defend the human and civil rights of the African community and to address the grave disparities in education, health, and economic development. No other radio station is tied to a mission statement like that. We want you to get involved and build your black community radio station. We need you to be engineers, fundraisers, DJs, and all who can contribute your time and creativity to make this the best radio station on the planet. We want your donations, your time, your genius, your music, your sweat, and your black power. This Black August, let's continue the resistance and build on our own black community controlled media. Today, Chairman Amali Yesatela, as a leader of the African Socialist International, speaks to his growing base around the world and leads the worldwide movement for liberation of African and African people everywhere. And I would like to bring up Chairman Amali Yesatela.
and uh, it's it's really important because it's not a radio station that's owned by any individual. It's not my radio station. It's not Desun's radio station. It's a community station. And we fought uh, to get this station. We're still engaged uh, in struggle uh, uh, to get this station. We've got the license for the station now, and there's still a lot of work that we have to do within the next uh, uh, several weeks so that we can uh, uh, actually flip the switch. Uh, hopefully, you'll get an opportunity uh, before you leave here today uh, to see uh, the place where uh, we are going to uh, set up the radio station right here. Uh, at the Uhuru House, and this is an appropriate place to, to establish it, right here, smack dab in the middle of our community. And when I say our community, I'm talking about the community uh, of the working, uh, oppressed people. I'm talking about the community where we see uh, police occupation on a regular basis up and down our avenues uh, throughout the general area that we live in. Uh, the community where, at one time, they had indicated that 71% of the people uh, here uh, live uh, at or below uh, the poverty line. And uh, so it's appropriate that we should do this and give our community an opportunity to speak for ourselves. Uh, we have a situation where uh, all kinds of forces claim to be speaking for our community, but they have no relationship to the community at all, uh, except uh, anytime something goes down, uh, the white man calls them up and, and get them to uh, condemn uh, the rest of us. Anybody who just saw uh, the uh, clip uh, with that young brother in Milwaukee could uh, see the pain that uh, he was experiencing. And I felt it sitting there. Uh, and he needs a voice. And he doesn't need to have uh, uh, only an opportunity to say anything, to say that he exists, that he represents a viable community when the police come in and gun down his brother. He needs a voice, and all of the people in our communities need a voice, and we are the ones who uh, they have quieted over the years. We're talking about this very building. Somebody mentioned uh, uh, that in 1996, this very building where we are seated now in order to keep us from talking because the police had murdered an 18-year-old African young man right down the street, three blocks away, had gunned him down while he was sitting in his car and was able uh, to tell the most uh, insane uh, kind of lie to justify that murder, just like they told a lie about the brother they killed uh, in Milwaukee, just like they told a lie about how they killed Mike Brown uh, in Ferguson, just like they tell lies about every one of us that they're gunning down. They told uh, uh, this lie, and they murdered this young man. And then after they murdered him, the people rose up uh, because the people have learned uh, 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 over a long history that you can't get justice from white power. White power will not give you justice. There's no justice in the courtroom. There's no justice with the police. And so people had come to that conclusion and they, they rose up, the community rose up and fought them in the streets of this country having a righteous rebellion. A rebellion that uh, targeted uh, uh, police cars, that destroyed two police precincts in this community. Uh, that burned to the ground uh, liquor stores owned by white people, a, a, a furniture store that was right down the street uh, that uh, made its fortune off our people over several uh, decades, uh, the people rose up. And then uh, uh, when the people rose up, of course, what you saw uh, was them sending the police in and using every force at their command uh, to suppress this community. Then, uh, because the people rose up, it made it necessary for them to pretend uh, that they were going to investigate the murder of 18-year-old Tyrone Lewis. He was murdered uh, by Sandra, uh, 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 Sandra Minor and, and, and James, what was the other guy's name? James uh, Knight. Uh, he was murdered uh, right down the street from here. People saw it. More than 40 witnesses went before a grand jury and said they saw the murder, but it didn't make any difference. And we knew he was murdered because the people came to this community after the murder. And because we had a trial of the mayor and the cops uh, who killed him right here in this building after the murder. And then uh, because we had called on the community to come out to a meeting uh, such as this meeting uh, on a Wednesday 
uh, on November 13th so that we could discuss uh, the fact that we knew uh, the grand jury was not going to indict the police who murdered this young man. Uh, they began arresting people on that Wednesday, on that day, before the meeting. They began arresting members of our movement because they didn't want us to say uh, anything to the community. They had a problem what we might say to the community. And at the moment uh, I arrived to, to this building, uh, we saw that the police were all out in the streets here, riding up and down, four in a car with their guns sticking out of the window, uh, trying to intimidate this community on the one hand, and then on the other hand, trying to spark uh, some uh, kind of incident that would justify them attacking this community. And uh, uh, what they did uh, was told people they couldn't come to the meeting. And people had to go in the alleys and around side streets to get here because the police had blocked the streets on both sides. Of, of this building to try and keep people from coming. They pepper sprayed people to try to make sure, uh, if they could, that people wouldn't come to this meeting. They didn't want us to be able to talk. They don't want ordinary black people to be able to talk for ourselves. They want mealy mouth, mixed filled, bootlicking other forces to talk for us. That's, that's what they want. And so, and so uh, once this meeting started, before the meeting started, I'm in the place because some people had got here. And uh, women and children were in this building, in this very same room. And somebody came up to me uh, while I'm trying to get the people to chill because the police are still riding up and down. And there are uh, perhaps a few hundred people standing on the outside. Uh, somebody comes into me and says, look, uh, Chairman, the police uh, have said over the loudspeaker that you have, we have five minutes to get out of the building. They've declared a meeting in our own building. This is our building. This, they don't own this building. This is our building. They say they have declared this meeting in our building an illegal assembly, and we have five minutes to get out of They're going to shoot tear gas into the building. Well, the room was con configured differently at that time, and the door uh, was here uh, to my left. And and within 30 seconds of somebody telling me there's tear gas, they began to shoot tear gas into this building because they didn't want us to talk. They didn't want people to hear what we have to say. They didn't want the people to have an opportunity to sum up what the police do to us on a daily basis in our community, especially if you black, if you poor, if you young uh, and you live uh, in America, the police are messing with you every day of your life. And we know that and they don't want us to be able to sum that up. And so they shot tear gas into this building. And uh, as a consequence of that, of course, uh, in fact, I was trapped in this building along with some other people who were leaders of this movement. And uh, it was clear that they intended to kill us on that day. They had more than 300, think about this. They had more than 300 different kinds of police out here. They planned this. This wasn't just the St. Petersburg Police Department. They had the Clearwater Police Department, Pinellas uh, Park uh, Police Department. They had, uh, uh, they had National Guards uh, down the street. They had uh, the state, uh, Florida State Patrol. They had all kinds of force. They planned this to make sure that we uh, couldn't just talk to each other. And so uh, they attacked this building with the intention to kill us. We know they intended to kill us. They came with a light airplane. They, they had a helicopter. Uh, and, and people uh, thought it, it looked like Philadelphia move. I don't know if anybody rem remember that incident where uh, the Philadelphia Police Department dropped a bomb uh, on move from a helicopter. And they came with the helicopter at us too. And uh, they were shooting uh, canisters, tear gas canisters, onto this building. And they were shooting tear gas canisters into the trees behind this building. And they were setting the trees afire uh, in an attempt to set the, the vans that were parked behind uh, the building afire. And they, were, uh, and they would use the tear gas canister and shoot it into the trees. And young people would come and snatch the branches, the burning branches, from the trees and try to drag them away uh, so that the place wouldn't burn down. And every time one of the young people would come and drag the branches out, the police would shoot the tear gas canisters at them to try to injure them and to drive them away. But they made a mistake. They made serious mistakes. Because there were members of our movement who were trying to get back into this building after we were trapped in. And the police would shoot pepper spray and tear gas at them to drive them out so they couldn't get back into the building. 
And what that meant was the people were not without leadership when they were outside of this building, when they had us trapped in this building with the intention to kill us. And the people rose up and fought the police. They engaged them in a serious battle, not only with bricks and bottles, but they engaged them in armed struggle to push them back. I'm alive today because uh, people shot down, brought a helicopter down right out here with gunfire. I'm alive today because the police were chased out of this community uh, while they were trying to kill me and other people who were here. They burned down houses in this community on that day. And uh, I'm mentioning this because it's a statement about the significance of being able to talk, being able to communicate with each other, being able to talk with each other without having to go through Reverend Chicken Bone. Uh, being able to talk to each other without having an attorney so-and-so uh, being the one who uh, is filtering our opinions. Being able to talk to each other without having a Chris Cuomo uh, uh, who is uh, twisting our words or trying to intimidate us to make sure uh, that we don't say anything that offends the status quo or offend, offend, uh, that would incite the masses of black people here. So they're careful about that. That's why Black Power 96 is really important. That's why we even come up with a provocative uh, name like uh, Black Power 96. This is not just, you've heard of power this and power that when they talk about these FM stations. This is Black Power 96. And we want it to be clear that that's what we stand for, Black Power, for power uh, in possession of our people and certainly in the possession of the most oppressed and harassed young uh, African people, uh, this is what it's about. Now, something is happening in this world, and all of you can see that. Uh, a lot of people are made uh, extremely uneasy uh, because of changes that you can see happening in the world. Uh, in the past, uh, there was this assumption of white power, white man dominate, controls the whole world. Everybody has experienced this at one time or another. Uh, certainly most of us have experienced this, but something is happening and people can see that white power is losing its grip on the planet. That it's very difficult for the white man to push and order people around like they used to be able to do. They can't order people around in Iran. They tell Iranians to do this. The people said this our uh, country, this our freedom that we, will, we are determined to be free ourselves. They can't order people around in Venezuela. The people in Venezuela said, this is our oil that's in Venezuela that you've been ripping off uh, for a uh, hundred years or more. We're going to use it for what we need to use it for. They can't, they can't bully the people in Afghanistan. Uh, people in Afghanistan want their own freedom. People in Iraq want their own freedom. What most people don't know when they see, uh, read the newspapers or they look at uh, what's online or they see uh, uh, things on television and this war in Iraq, war in Iran, uh, war, uh, uh, not war in Iran, but threats against Iran, war in Afghanistan. What most people don't know is that the, these countries that we are talking about, the white man drew the borders for those countries. Did you know that? When you're looking at what's happening in Lebanon in the Middle East, did you know that, that Lebanon, the borders were drawn by the French and the British? White people drew those borders. White people drew the borders that constitute Saudi Arabia. White people drew the borders that constitute what is now called Syria. These are, these are borders that they drew when they were powerful, when they can tell the world what to do, and then they can pick the people's leaders for them. But the world is changing. They can't do it that way anymore. And they're upset because of it. And they didn't do it just because they didn't like Arabs or just because they didn't like Muslims, they did it because it was profitable. Because we live uh, in, a, in a, a world uh, that is dominated by capitalism, the thing that they uh, use as an excuse to go and murder people around the world, defense of capitalism, what they like to call is the American way of life. Did you know where capitalism came from? You think Jesus brought capitalism to white people? Do you think that somehow uh, people prayed for it and said, oh God, let there be capitalism and, and that benefits white people? No, it didn't happen like that. Capitalism came into existence because white people who were starving and diseased in Europe, and I, you don't ever have to worry about me lying to you about white people, because uh, white people have their own history. You don't have to make up nothing about them. You don't have to make up nothing. I don't like people who lie on white people. I got a problem with people who lie on white people, because you don't have to do that. Just tell the truth. The truth is damning enough. 
And the fact is that the white people in Europe who uh, were living with starvation or near starvation in the most oppressive circumstances that they call feudalism where the kings and the queens and the nobility owned and controlled all the land and the majority of the people who lived there had to live by working on the king's land, the queen's land, the noble's land. And uh, while they didn't exist in slavery, uh, they couldn't keep what they, what they produced on that land. They kept a little bit, and then the rest of it went to the nobility. This was called feudalism. They were being exploited. This is where the myth of Robin Hood comes from. You know, the guy who robs the rich and gives to the poor, they were poor because they were being exploited by the nobility. And so, and then you had a situation where uh, Europe uh, was uh, almost annihilated by disease, where half the population, half the white people on Earth, at least half the white people on the planet Earth, died in four short years from a plague. And Europe rescued itself, not by Jesus, although they were certain that they must have committed some kind of offense against the gods because, and they were being punished, everybody was dying, the Pope was scared. Did you know that? Y'all know the Pope could be scared? The Pope said he's got a special relationship with God. You would think he would want to meet God if he had such a special relationship. Uh, uh, but when the plague came to Europe, the Pope got out of the Vatican. He was running as fast as he could. This is true. <laughs> he was running as fast as he could to get around from other people so he might uh, get uh, 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 the plague, die from the plague himself and have an early meeting with God. Uh, so I'm suspicious of the guy. He makes me extremely suspicious. And this was a time when the Catholic Church was the only Catholic Catholicism was the was the only re, uh, Christian religion in the world. And so this was the main representation of Christianity, and he's running like hell uh, because Europe was being devastated by disease, and Europe was being devastated by poverty. White people lived for more than a thousand years under feudalism extreme poverty. And while they were poor, here you are, uh, in Africa, Chinese have magnificent civilizations, magnificent civilization in what they now call the Americas, the Aztecs, the Mayans who lived here, great civilizations, splendid civilizations in Africa and what have you. And then you've got this group of people who come uh, out, of this, uh, out of this barren, diseased, uh, uh, unfree Europe, and then begin to build for themselves from stealing from everybody else. You think I'm making that up? When you leave here, uh, go to a library that's open on Sundays. Google it. <laughs> and uh, uh, you don't have to make this up. And I'm only mentioning this uh, because something is happening in the world and I just want us to be able to understand what the hell is going on. And what's going on is that Europe uh, built a world, a world economy, uh, that stems from having slaves and enslaving people. And I like that, that clip you just saw where they said uh, somehow the slaves got together and they got the stones. No, these were African people who were captured. They were captives. These were African people. Uh, there was no such thing as them bringing slaves from Africa. They brought black people. They brought captives from Africa who they enslaved. That's what they brought here. And so... Uh, here we have a situation where something is happening in the world and we just need to understand it and understand our place in this world. Uh, and uh, we're looking at a crisis, uh, a crisis uh, because they have constructed the world on slavery and colonialism. Which means that if you have a world that's based on slavery, uh, then every, every, <laughs> every slave revolt threatens your world. Think about that. If you have a world that's based on having slaves, every time the slaves rise up, it threatens your world. And, and it should threaten your world, shouldn't it? Because you, you shouldn't want to be somebody who's living off the sweat and blood of other people, should you? You wouldn't want to be somebody who's selling children and things like that and, and capturing human beings. And so your, your, your life should, and your world should be threatened. But every time there's a slave rebellion, if you're if your world is based on slavery, it's upset. And here's what I'm saying. I'm saying when you look at the world, uh, the fact is that all the wealth that Europe has, all the wealth that created capitalism, and the well-being of the white peoples of the world who make a minority, 
a small minority of the world's population. All of this wealth has come about as a consequence of enslaving human beings, enslaving our people. They like to talk about America being a melting pot or a country of immigrants. We're not immigrants, we're captives. That's what brought us here. Captivity, we are the only group of people who came here not, as a, not looking for a better way of life, but we lost a better way of life as a consequence of having been brought here. That's why you look and see our communities. That's why you see starvation, poverty, everything. It's not because you're, you, you're sad. That's not why you are hungry and poor. It's because somebody attacked Africa, which is the richest continent in the world in terms of natural resources, and they enslaved us in Africa, and they brought us here and enslaved us here. They control Africa today in Africa, and they control us today here. And they're still exploiting Africa, and they keep us so dumb and stupid that we don't want to have anything to do with Africa while they're looting it every day and have been looting it now for more than 600 years. More than 600 years. They don't, even, they don't even have to protect it from us. Here we are fighting for welfare in Section 8. And they got 12 million square miles of nothing but wealth, which is the birthright of every living black person on the planet Earth. And we've been separated and divorced from it, even in our own brains. They don't even have to worry about us trying to go to Africa. You going to Africa? Africa? I remember, I remember just trying to get my mother to go to Africa before she died. And my dear, dear, lovely mother was afraid to go, afraid to go to Africa. Hell, this is where you ought to be scared. This is the place that we live in now where, mama, you used to beat your son saying, I'm going to get it out of you before the white man get it out of you. This is the place where you had to victimize me in order to tame me before the white man kill me. Africa didn't do that to you. Yes. Africa is not killing, wasn't killing our children in the streets. America did that. Yes. So if you're going to run from somebody, run from somebody who did something to you. Don't run from Africa. And I'm just saying it's really important for us to understand. I know some people are talking about Africa. No, I'm not trying to get you to go back. But I'm telling you, when it's time, when it's time, and the only reason I'm not in Africa today is because we got too much to do here to fight back. Yeah. And I'm not here because I'm not going back empty-handed. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm not going back empty-handed. I want every damn thing that we've built, everything we've created before I leave, before I get on anything going back, I'm taking back what we created here. Yeah. And then what I'm requiring. Because I want white people to get jobs. I want white people to work for themselves. I want them to sing for themselves, do your own music, do your own gymnastics. You know what I'm Play your own basketball. You know what I'm uh, Do your own dances, do everything for yourself. Right? Because we're not doing it for you anymore. We're doing it for ourselves. We've created a new world for us. And so, uh, how do you get there, though? You can't get there by you know, just walking around and telling my hands up, don't shoot. Do you think it makes a difference when you say hands up, don't shoot? They shoot you with your hands up, your hands down. They shoot you when you're awake. They shoot you when you sleep. They shoot you when you're a child. Like Tamir Rice, who was 12 years old in Cleveland, yep. or like Ayanna Jones, who was 7 years old in Detroit. They don't care how old you are, how tall you are, how fat, skinny you are, whether you're fighting or not fighting. If they don't care about that, then damn it, you ought to at least fight back. <laughs> you ought to at least fight back. That's what we say. <laughs> but what are you fighting for? What are you fighting for? And some people say, I'm fighting because I'm mad. I'm not fighting because I'm mad. Hell, I'm mad as hell. You've been mad a long time. You don't fight just because you're mad. Your objective is not just to get involved in the fight. Your objective is to win. To win what? And what I'm saying is that we have to be in control of our own lives. 
again. And some Africans can't even imagine being in control of our own lives. Some Africans, black people, have no memory of ever having been free. It's not like the Palestinian who uh, is uh, serving you uh, stink and rotten food in these community stores around here who are also oppressed in Palestine that they call Israel. At least they have a memory of being free. Some of them even know uh, the cities and communities that, that their parents and grandparents have lived in, even though they haven't been there for four or five generations themselves. But we have no memory of being free. And if you don't know what freedom looks like, freedom can be scary as hell. Because even somebody who is enslaved, living under slavery, as bad as slavery is, uh, at least you know where the food going to come from. At least you know uh, uh, what roof you might have an opportunity to sleep on and the rags that you're going to wear. But this frightening thing called freedom, it's like going into outer space. You have no memory. You have no knowledge of what the hell it looks like. And that's what we have a responsibility to do, is help Africans have a vision of what it is to be free. And, and that's the struggle that we're engaged in now. That's why we have to have our own radio. We have to have our own means of communicating with each other. Because once you set free from white domination, once you know you can wear what you want to wear, it's not going to mean that you can't get a job. You understand what I'm saying? It's not going to mean that the police will stop you on the streets. Once you know that you don't have to uh, sing these horrible lyrics because white people want to hear them in order for you to get a contract to make music, you begin to know what freedom is. You don't know what freedom is when everything that you do has to pass the test of white people, white power. You can't get a job unless you pee in the bottle. Why you just started that when you first came and got me on the full employment, when you first kidnapped me and put me on that ship? I didn't have to pee in no bottle. <laughs> and then they put the drugs that won't give us a job in your own community. You can't get no job in the legal capitalist economy. But you see that there's wealth all around you. You leave your community. You live in one of the richest cities in the world. All you got to do is leave your community and see it. Go downtown and see it. Go to one of the beaches and see it. Wealth all around you, but you got nothing. Your children got nothing. But your children are crazy. They see all the wealth, and they know that they ought to have it just like anybody else. If the white man got it, why can't he have it? If the white man got it, why can't you have it? Why couldn't your mama and your daddy have it? We say, well, they didn't have good education. They say stupid stuff like that. And we've been ruled by tobacco chewing, backwards uh, 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 Alabama hillbillies and stuff like that who had no education at all. Ain't got nothing to do with that. It's got the fact that we are colonized as a people. People want to tell you that your problem is racism. Oh, you got to fight against racism. What is, what is racism? Racism is the ideas in the heads of white people. Ideas don't kill you. Ideas don't control you. Power is the determining factor. They will have you spending all your time trying to get the white man to like you. That's fighting against racism. Make the white man like you. How do you make the white man like you? Well, you learn how to talk like white people. And you learn how to walk like white people. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, one thing you cannot ever do uh, is pick up a brick and bust the white man upside the head. Because he certainly won't like you then. And so uh, you are trapped uh, in this perennial situation of fighting against racism. They put leather up you. They put gunshots up you. Uh, and you are trying to change their attitudes. Guess what? You can change their attitudes. Power is the question that we're fighting for. I just want to say this and shut up. So what we're looking at around the world is a real shaky situation for white power. That's because they do require somebody else's oil to make their cars run, their 
factories run. They require somebody else's coal time. Let me see the hands of people here who've ever heard of coal time. And coal time is a mineral that's uh, mostly located in the Congo. And it's a mineral that's used uh, in cell phones. You got your cell phone, your computers, and what have you. Black people are dying for that right now in, coal, in, in Congo. Uh, uh, you know, you've got your Apple and your iPhone, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that Apple and that iPhone requires coal tan that comes from Congo. And uh, uh, you're talking about a place, a, a, an economy. Uh, they require the land of this people here. You know, there are concentration camps in this country. Other than the housing projects, and other than the prisons where we are locked up in, I'm talking about, they call them Indian reservations. No matter anyone ever talk about that people. This is their land. I don't care about the deed you got. I don't care about your mortgage. This is their land. It's been ripped off, stolen from them. And they are in concentration camps with a lifespan on the average in the 40s. They live, if they're lucky, to be in the 40s. They are being crushed by alcoholism and attack on every damn thing that they ever had in this land. And this is where the power of white people, white power comes from. The theft of this land. Your enslavement. They didn't just enslave you in St. Petersburg, Florida, in Haiti, in Jamaica, all over what they call South America. Everything in South America, from Cuba, you name it, is there to facilitate the so-called slave trade. Wouldn't be a Cuba, wouldn't be a Puerto Rico, wouldn't be a Haiti, wouldn't be a Jamaica, wouldn't be a Trinidad if they didn't have black people who they wanted to scatter all these places to work for free for white people and white power. That's where it all came from. And then uh, they took your Africa that didn't have a single border separating black people before. They took your Africa and sat down in Europe in a place called Berlin, Germany in 1884 and 85, and they carved it up. You know why they did it? Because they wanted what was in Africa, and because every war that they've had has been a war among them to, about who was going to get what that they were stealing from other people. So it was like the mafia. They sat down around the table in Berlin, Germany, 1884 and 85, and they carved up Africa and said, give this to the French and give this to the British, and give this to the Belgium, and give this to the Germans, and what, and they carved up Africa like that. That's why you, the borders you see in Africa today, we didn't put them there, they put them there. And then they, in Africa and here, they give us a false national consciousness, because you walking around calling yourself a Negro, or Black American, an Afro-American, there's no such animal as an African-American. The fact is, if we were Africans when we got on the ship in Africa, when the white man got there, if we were Africans when we got on the ship, we were Africans when we got off the damn ship. How do we get on the ship as Africans and get off as Negroes? <laughs> so they give, us, they give you a false national consciousness. Look at West Africa as an example. Place in West Africa called Cameroon. Anybody ever heard of Cameroon? And people in, in West Africa call themselves Cameroonians. Do you know where the word, you know where the name Cameroon comes from? It's from the Portuguese word for shrimp. So you got these people walking around calling themselves shrimp. They are not shrimp. That's a false national consciousness. How many people here have ever heard of Nigeria? They like to talk about Nigeria, the place with the second largest black population in the world, they say. Do you know where the word, where Nigeria comes from? This was two territories, two other territories that were controlled by England. England is a nasty, cold rock, barren, with nothing there but ugly white people, right? And, 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 and there was this, uh, uh, this man named Lugard, Frederick Lugard, who worked for British corporations. And they sent him to this place in West Africa and told him they wanted him to combine these two territories that the British controlled. And, and Lugard took his mistress with him, who was to become his wife. And her name was Flora Shaw. And he's trying to think of a name for this, these combined territories. And she said, why don't we call it nigger area? That's where Nigeria comes from, the name Nigeria. They name us like pets. 
all up and down the line. That's why your name is Johnson and Brown. And all these other funny things that we call ourselves. And they have now removed from us the memory of who the hell we are. And we have a false national identity. And the struggle, that part of the struggle we engaged in is win back our consciousness of ourselves as a people. We are one people, one Africa, one nation of people. And so the world is changing. People in Afghanistan want their stuff back. People in Iraq want their stuff back. People in Palestine want their stuff back, want their freedom back. People in Venezuela, they want their stuff back. All around the world, people want their stuff back. And the problem is that if they take their stuff back, then white people are going to have to get a job and learn how to play football. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Don't, don't laugh, because I used to remember, I can remember a time when I never would have imagined white people could claim they could dance. And uh, so, don't laugh. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's happening in the world. Great changes are underfoot, and we are seeing the decline of white power. Used to be a time where America was powerful. The white world was extremely powerful. And... Uh, that's the time where they created figures like Wonder Woman and Superman fighting for the American way. And uh, all of these superheroes, uh, some of you are <coughs> too young to remember, like Captain Marvel <coughs> and the rest of them. All these superheroes. Uh, but today, uh, America uh, can't see a future of, like that. And it can't see a future, so instead it goes back. That's why you're looking at Superman today. That's why all these new movies, Captain America and all this stuff today, uh, they have to go back and try to find this era of power and strength that America represented. They can't see the future. Or when they see the future, you know what they see, don't you? Zombies, right? The Z Nation, the walking dead. So, uh, so they go back to the past, they try to go back and create Iron Man and Superman and Captain America and that. Uh, and when they try to go forward, all they can see is zombies and vampires, the walking dead, the living dead, all of this. They can't see the future. I can see the future. And the future is one that will allow black people, Africans, and the oppressed peoples of the world to take our rightful place. Standing on our own feet in control of our own destiny, having taken it away from a parasitic social system, a parasitic country, and being able to say that my child will have a future not because some good white man gets elected, or some good white woman gets elected, or some Licksville Negro gets elected. My child will have a future because that future will be in my hands. That's the thing that we do. Let's make this radio station happen. Let's let these young African men and women have a place. It's going to be a local station. It's what they call a low power station. We, open, we kick it on. We'll be able to cover about 100,000 households. Uh, all the African community here, parts of Gulfport, be able to hit Eckert's, hit downtown, St. Parts of downtown St. Petersburg, and the University of South Florida. And then what we're going to do is stream it so that even while we're doing it here, they'll be able to listen to us and stop black people and stop home uh, in Sweden and in, in England. And if the, if, the, if the infrastructure is good enough in different places in Africa, they'll also not only be able to listen, but they'll be able to talk to us over our radio. This is what it is that we are fighting for. And so we want young people here to be able to hang around a radio station so that you don't just learn how to be a disc jockey. You don't just learn how to talk on the radio, but you can become engineers. You can be all these other things. And this is not going to be a profit-making radio station. This is going to be a community radio station. And its success will depend on whether or not we support that station with our money, with our resources, by volunteering, working for that station, and the rest of it. But Black Power 96 is on the agenda, brothers and sisters, so let's go ahead and make it happen. All power to the people. Black power to the African community. Who knew? Who knew?
I chuck the deuces with no excuses Before the fuse lit and I use a full clip I bang Malcolm X, get him That many of our people are using this word revolution Loosely Without taking careful consideration What this word actually means This could be the music of the revolution Yeah, let it die, let it build up for a second And the music is my contribution uh-huh. And they gon' play, they gon' play with a fist in the air Coming for the economic pride, declare One fist in the air, shout out to the mayor Coming for the economic pride, declare Black fist in the air, shout out to the mayor This could be the music for the revolution, the revolution. Just gotta let it die, let it build up for a second And the music is my contribution Carving in my skin, running on my second wind Letting in nothing but the town redevelopment Giving in never, better luck with a sedative Understand that the devil won't quit Try to replace my queen for a bitch Your life is a bitch cause you wanna be rich With no knowledge yourself so you end up like them Fighting our king, got us losing our men Leaving our women with all the children In government buildings, no money to spend So they start at the plate and go right to the pit Help us, I just smoke too much weed And I know that it's healthy But it's got me aware of a beast, is it me? Or is it G-O-V-G-O-D? Help me music for the revolution. You just gotta let it die, let it build up for a second. And the music is my contribution. And they gon' play, they gon' play with a fist in the air. Coming for the egg and I'm pride to One fist in the air, shout out to the mayor. Coming for the egg and I'm pride to clear. Black fist in the air, shout out to the mayor. The music for the revolution. When you study the historic okay. nature of revolution. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. The motive of a revolution, the objective of a revolution, and the result of a revolution, and the methods used in a revolution. You may change words. You may devise another program. You may change your goal and you may change your mind. Look at the American Revolution. In 1776, that revolution was for what? For land. How was it? Why did they want land? Independence. How was it carried out? Bloodshed. Number one, it was based on land. 
the basis of independence. And the only way they could get it was bloodshed. Here's another piece I did. That piece, you know, it was hard for me to remember the words because I just did that this week and I had a bunch of other things going on at the same time, but I wanted to really do this for an event. I could have done another track that I really knew and had the vibe and everything, but I just really wanted to do it because of the message it was bringing. So I hope y'all caught what it needed to be said, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but anyway, here's another piece I did, spoken word. Uh, here's my thoughts, it can never be bought. The type of champion that's winning when I'm taking the loss. They just putting up an image with imaginary flaws to slave in their own people. It's whatever for the cause, huh? I'm sorry, y'all. I got a great big conscience. Ain't too many leaders in this world honest. Most prophets want prophets slanging that garbage. No knowledge, no wisdom. Wolf in the sheep's garment. So alarming. Beg my pardon, but the beat that got me started. In the room, feeling like I'm being watched by two artists. Marley and Pac, they shooting that cops because cops killing us. Because they the hand of a giant roll by so. Let's ride slowly. Round up all the homies in. Let's unite and we can weave out the phonies, yeah. I ain't right just reflecting what they showed me. They showed me that the light ain't nothing but the police. And how we gonna react to that when the light is the truth that'll hold us back? No, the light is a sight that'll take us back when we all came from Africa and everyone was black. That's facts. That's facts for yes. Not every cop is bad, that's what they say, but I say corruption doesn't pass. That goes from nine cops too. Don't be talking about you really about that life when you're snitching on your crew for a lighter sentence. You played the game, you was in it. You rolled your own dice and you gambled every minute. Now you're losing every single minute. It's just cause and effect and karma still bitching up. What's the mission? What's the purpose? Why we living? Consuming lies every day, then we keep shit. Feeling fine every day, but we still sipping. Why we won't love when the pain come with it? Mm. See, we crazy. Trapped in the prison of perspective. Coming from all kinds of directions, infectious. I had to bring the disinfected to minimize the pest with begging for a death wish. Murder negativity. I'm thinking, what's got into me? My own worst enemy, the devil and the trinity. Godlike point of view is something that we'll never see. And I got the energy, yeah, I got the energy. Ha! Huh. Let me chill for a second. Let me calm down. Let me show you real for a second. I don't keep on guessing. I'ma strike the question. As long as the answer is true, still a blessing. Rain is a blessing. Sun is a blessing. Without bad, you wouldn't know good was a blessing. Still learning lessons. Like it's all new. I'd have been here before. I'm stuck under this glue called gravity. Leave it to me, I say insanity. The past life I had to be. Solomon, your majesty. Ecclesiastes, style so nasty. Far from Nostradamus, but far from a patsy. Listen, I just pop up out the blue like acne. To give hope to all the children playing in the back streets. Looking in the sky asking, does it get better? We stuck under pressure and the system won't let up. It says go to school if you want a little cheddar. Gotta brainwash ourselves, become a part of the setup. Don't see it for what it is, that's all they want to tell us. Just give us your soul and roll and shut the hell up. Uh. Don't ask questions, you'll attract attention. If you love life, then take what we suggested. Damn, human species hurting they own. That's why I roll with a chrome and it ain't 24s. Make them leave me alone, I'm protecting my dome. Why Sandra Bland had to die just for them to leave her alone? I'm fast to the point, in a couple seconds I'm gone, cause no, I ain't the type that'll write what is wrong. This world is my home and I don't ever think I'm leaving till I stop breathing. I'm feeding them seeds, come and eat it. From the full grown believers to the fetus, if you eager, I can meet you with the preachers and teachers. Don't ever teach us, I ain't Jesus. Just a speaker of truth and then I speak up, so keep up. I feel like I'm losing you through the speaker. I'm not liked and promise to change for the progress. Growing is a process, stay the same, that's nonsense. Take a second, reflect on what I just said. These words is hard bled, the tools I use when I shed. The reality of poverty thinking inside your head, it starts by not knowing yourself, so get in your head. The more you aware, the more competitive edge, the more you're letting this lad expose his fraudulent fast spitting. Hit them all, if not circle the block, then we get them all. The black I'm talking about is the block that keeps us from seeing all I'm needing y'all. More than ever to click up and beat them all. All we gotta do is break ourselves out these shitty walls. Mental wall, sky's the limit, there is no mental law Cause you can get away with murder by thinking about it, yo At the same time you can build whatever the fuck you want Creativity is gonna take me to what the fuck I want And I'm not like them, promise to change for the progress Growing is a process, stay the same, that's nonsense Evan Prescott, y'all Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru.